Hi, I'm Mo, and I'm testing the limits of my anti-anxiety medication. And I'm TJ, and I'm high on pre-workout right now. <laughs> Let's record this now. Yeah! I'm itching all over. Definitely. And this is, what is this, TJ? It's still new to us, damn it. Welcome to another episode of It's Still New to Us, Damn It. Hope you guys enjoyed the last one. I think I fixed it. Hopefully I did. If you hear high-pitched noises, I'm deeply sorry. Please don't throw stuff at me. And I've crashed. I'm back down to earth. Now he's back down to earth. It's quite a ride. Yeah. That jasmine tea I gave you really helped, didn't it? Yeah, it did. It evened everything out. Oh, that's good. That's so good. So anyway, how are you today? I'm doing good. We are officially in my mother's basement, where we belong. So, it's good. <laughs> for now, for now. For now. Actually, maybe we'll make it over to my roommate's basement. Yes. And then, hopefully, if we ever do this successfully, an actual recording studio. <laughs> That'd be fun. That'd be actually really fun. Yeah, We're fun. in a very cramped room with all my uh, Christmas decorations and stuff of my past that I failed at. Over there in the corner is the base that I gave up on after three months because of a high anxiety. Well, as if Homer Simpson taught us anything, it's that if you're not good at something, don't do it. Yeah. Why bother? <laughs> exactly. I see some baby toys in the corner. Definitely, there. yes. Oh, that uh, just makes for great acoustics. Exactly. Echo, 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 echo. Yeah, that works. Okay. Yeah, perfect. All right, so enough of our jabbering. Nobody wants to hear us talk about actual stuff, just about the movies. Do they want to hear us talk about those even? I don't know. I don't, we have we have three listeners, so I think they do. Oh. The three listeners. Thank you, the three ma- listeners in America and the one in I believe China or Asia. I don't know. Well, I know Asia is a continent, not a country, but it's somewhere in Asia. But thank you very much for listening. We appreciate it. Please like and subscribe, or don't. Should we just should we relax on that, or should we keep, should we press our audience yeah, so they can you subscribe? If you want to like and subscribe, do it. Yeah, we're not gonna pressure you. If not, leave really hateful comments about us. We're not in this to to make money. We're in this for superiority. Complex. Yes, and then to make money after we gain our superiority sure. complex. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Well, anyway, like you said, enough of this blathering. We're here to talk about a movie. Yes, the penultimate movie of this show right now. It is 1981's Porky's. Oh, good lord, Porky's. Yeah. Okay, so Porky's release, of course, 1981, just as I said. Directed by Bob Clark, A Christmas Story, and Rhinestone, the uh, great Sylvester of Stallone, Dolly Parton vehicle. And then written by Bob Clark, also. Black Christmas and Took 182. (laughs) Starring Kim Cattrall, not a leading role. She's in this film for probably half of it. Oh, not even. She was probably a quarter. Yeah, a quarter. But she stopped building Wikipedia, so we gotta go by that. Um, from Big Trouble in Little China, her best movie, I yeah, think. It's a good movie. Kim Cattrall's not in a lot of great movies. She's just known for Sex and the City mostly, right? I think so. Yeah. And I, even uh, I guess there's a revival of that. I don't think she's. She in is it. not in it. No. Yeah, she's not a fan of uh, Sarah Jessica Parker or something. I don't. Know. I don't I know. Don't care. Yeah. Um, and also the movie Mannequin. Oh, that's right. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, of course, the gem that is Star Trek VI, The Undiscovered Country. Yes. Great movie. Also, uh, Dan Monahan, who was Pee Wee. Okay. Was from nice. From the Hip and Baby Geniuses, or directed by Bob Clark. And Mark Harrier played, I guess, a guy named Billy. Who I don't knows? know. They who knows? They, yeah. The same. They were, they, with the exception of one or two of the characters, they're all the same person. Yeah. He was in a movie called Real Men with uh, John Ritter. Okay. And Popcorn, the whole movie from 1991, which I've seen a little bit of in, on the Sci-Fi channel. Never seen it. Yeah. And, of course, Alex K- Karras. Alex Karras? Alex Karras. Alex Karras. Detroit Lion. Yes. Wasn't also Blazing Saddles, FM, and Webster. Webster. He was the yeah. star of Webster. That's correct. That's true. Now, TJ, please give us the synopsis of hey, this you got film. It. So after directing uh, the classic that is Black Christmas, Bob Clark thought, hell, I just made the first slasher film, one of the first. I'm going to make a romping uh, teen sex comedy. And the film itself follows a group of high school students from the fictional Angel Beach High School in Florida. And these students must navigate their newfound world of burgeoning hormones and angst, as well as the rampant misogyny and bigotry of the 1950s. Despite their differences, they have a shared goal, and that is to lose their virginity. To accomplish this, they attempt to sneak into the infamous Porky's, a strip club in a neighboring county, owned appropriately by a hulking mess of a man named Porky, whose brother is the sheriff of the county and the de facto bouncer for the strip club. When their plan to sleep with Porky's girls goes awry, and they're kicked out of the county altogether, they band together to exact revenge against the unsavory businessman who refused to allow underage teens to drink and solicit sex from strippers in his establishment. In the end, 
Does hilarity really ensue? I don't think so. No. This was a weird movie. This is like the most progressive comedy I've ever seen before in my life. <laughs> it's <laughs> it be. so weird. Like, okay, so Porky's has been hyped up for years as this like crazy sex comedy. Like, you think of the 80s, you think of Porky's, uh, you think of Caddyshack, Caddyshack Bachelor Party. Mm-hmm. Think of those films. This is like the milk toast of comedies of the 80s. That's a great way to put That's it. That's a great, yeah. I, going into this, I didn't know any of the cast. I didn't know Kim Cattrall was in it. I didn't know Alex Karras was in it. I'd always just seen, like, the movie trailer. I thought this was in the vein of Caddyshack, of Ghostbusters, of Animal House, of Vacation. No. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't think so anymore. I don't know why this, I think uh, you said something when we were watching the movie and a little earlier, too. I think people remember two scenes. And actually, they're kind of one scene, if you really think about it. The uh, the shower scene, and the fact that, you know, you get to see a lot of, you know... Boobs. Nudity, boobs, and you do get to see a gym teacher, a homely gym teacher, grab onto uh, a, a, a underage person's uh, genitals. Yeah. And pull with all her might. You can say dick. Sure, dick. <laughs> yeah. We they can swear on here, TJ. Way. That's right. I just think yeah. the word genitals is funny, too, honestly. That's true. I like to be formal. No, I like to be straightforward. I want to say, like, dick, penis. I don't want any... Because it sounds weirder if you don't use the words. Like, you know how that that, fit in, that, <clears throat> that famous Patton Oswalt skit where it's like, like, like I touch his diddly do and his <laughs> magical gumdrops. I'm like, that's worse than just saying dick and balls. Like, <laughs> oh, absolutely. It, it yeah. absolutely is. Uh, but what, what, what's the worst euphemism for a penis? Is it <sighs> prick? Mm, no. Let's see. What's the worst I've ever heard? I don't know. I can tell you the worst for a woman. All right, what is it? Snatch. Snatch. That's a horrific word. That is bad. <laughs> Horrifically yeah. Does cunt word. mean snatch? I'm not smart. Um. What does that mean? I don't know. I think it's just a derogatory term for that part. Or I don't know. In general, it's a... I feel like we should say the word more. People in Australia and Britain, they got it. They're like, oh, right yeah, away. I don't know why it's so... Here, bad. it's just like, no. That's like the one word you can't say. You can say fuck. You can say shit. I think it was a boomer thing, too. I think we're seeing people care less about that word. I yeah. I see why it's so offensive. Exactly. Uh, but anyway, yeah. So, Porky's was the, 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 the middle child between Black Christmas and A Christmas Story. Bob Clark, by the way, what, a, what an interesting portfolio. Yeah, this is weird. I saw this portfolio. Okay, so he did... Black Christmas. Correct. Before this, his directorial de- debut was a, m- a movie called She Man. Oh, and what was that? Do you know? That was about a man who was blackmailed to cross dress by a crazy transvestite. I believe that's what the mm-hmm. descriptions say on Wikipedia. Sounds not like sure. that would age well. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. It's like um uh that C. Thomas Hall movie. Uh. Oh uh oh god! When he goes to college. When he goes to college. Yeah. Oh god! Soul Man. Soul Man. Yeah. Oh, god, hey, he's Lord. definitely well in 1986. <laughs> good lord. Yeah. But then uh, he went later would go on to direct Super Baby Geniuses. Correct? Yeah, Super Baby Geniuses. He directed Baby Geniuses, the first one. Then mm-hmm. sequel. Sequel was his last movie, and one like magnum opus. is Magnum Opus. Yes, definitely. It won like stinky, like stinky directing. Oh, there's another thing besides the Golden Raspberries about bad movies. <laughs> anyway, so he doesn't have. He has like a hit or miss track record. He has well, a Christmas Story, which is a, mm-hmm. a classic, like yeah. aired on TV at TNT, TNT, Twenty Four Hours a day on christmas eve which is soon and then we got um that christmas which is really good if you i haven't seen it, seen it. Very i gotta check it out i will but then it's kind of like a mixed bag it's just like porkies porkies <laughs> porkies two porkies three and then so he did the sequels yeah oh did he do the summer story the sequel yeah he did do that Hey, you know what? I'll give him this. I'll give Bob Bob Clark this. A lot of directors they make their first one and they move on and let some other hack take uh, take uh, the reins. Bob Clark wasn't having that. I'll give him that. Yes, Pretty but cool. they still call him a hack. So well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe. Then we're getting too much hate on Bob Clark. Sorry, Bob Clark. If you're listening to us, which you you probably not, but if you are, we're deeply alive? sorry. I don't know. Is he dead? Yeah, who knows? We don't know. We do not do that much great research on this, folks, but we try our best. No. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. let's get it. By the way, he's not. He's not alive? 2007. Okay, good. What if his spirit haunts us? Well, let's talk about this classic movie. Yeah. Uh, it opens up, and I didn't realize it took place in the 50s. It takes place in the 50s. Uh, yeah. Right out the gate, they let you know President Eisenhower is uh, in office. So it's, uh, you know, the Lions, the Detroit Lions were winning a game in Pittsburgh, uh, which factually has not happened since the Eisenhower administration. Wow. Fun fact. 
Um, and it starts with one of the kids. I don't know their name. They're all the same. Waking up with an erection. I think that's Pee Wee. I was thought that Pee-wee? I thought that was like the other guy, but I guess I was wrong. But I didn't think it was Pee Wee though, because we met him later, and I was like, "That's the Pee Wee. He looks." Yeah, because okay, so I watched the sequel for this. I didn't watch the third one because we ran out of time. And he's being modest when he says we don't do research. <laughs> yeah, we're going above and beyond. I would did. I would have gone above and beyond. Uh, sorry, I would have gone above and beyond if I watched all three of them. But instead, I watched Rope, the Alfred Hitchcock movie, instead. I must say, way better. <laughs> what a diverse way to spend your Christmas vacation. Yeah, Love exactly. It. Awesome. So, okay, so in the first one, I believe it is, I think his name's Billy, I don't know, Tommy. You can just give out generic names and, like, these characters are it. <laughs> there are, there is, like, definitely a Billy and a Tommy. They should have given them nicknames. Like, you know Pee Wee, because that's meat. his nickname. And Meat, because yeah. that's how you're identifiable. Really but the rest really are just, like, yeah. just nameless characters. They all act the same. That's the major problem with movie. They do act like teenagers. Problem is, teenagers aren't interesting. Unless you make them interesting. That's a good point. If you just make them teenagers, they're boring as hell. Teenagers think they're interesting, but they're not. No. Typically. Yeah. That's why, like, a lot of these 80s comedies gave, like, gave each character a different personality. So that way they remain memorable. Mem- they remain memorable. And also, they have some kind of quirk or kind of thing that you could laugh at. Correct. Yeah. And coming away from this, the only ones I do remember were the ones with the shtick. Meat, who's a, you know, big meathead. He has a giant dick. Yes, that is a recurring joke. He's yeah. got a giant dick. Uh, he almost seduces in his first scene a very underage freshman. Student. No, he doesn't seduce him. He just, like, she asks, why is your name me? Oh, and, like, yeah. do you want to know why? I was like, I don't think I should. But the ladies kept impressing him, like, come on, do That's it. That's right. It was, like, the senior girls, like, uh, pranking the freshman yeah. girl or something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, I will say this about this movie. It's fucking gross, and it's creepy. Not gross, but it's dirty. It's very yeah. dirty and, gr- and just... It's, it's views on women and sex are so outdated by today's standards. Yes, but in some ways, somewhat progressive in exactly. other standards. <laughs> exactly. I was just about to say, it's weird, but, like, everything's consensual. Yeah. Like, even when, they, well, even when they're staring at the girls in the shower, the girls find out and they play along. Yeah. So, in a way, yeah, it is very surprisingly progressive, in a way. I think that's, was, I don't know if that's progressive or not, but... It's like, <laughs> well, just the idea that the women were still in power they were just on equal footing with yeah the that's men. true they yeah were in on equal footing with the men i never thought about it that um, way obviously like the notion of porky's having his girls that's obviously not like a progressive thing for no he's very protective of them is porky the villain of this movie let's just get right to it i don't think so i mean he's an asshole but he's, an asshole. No I, he's not much of an asshole that's the problem he's not like a i i think of this like a dukes of hazard episode he's not like boss hog level evil even though i've never seen the episode of duke of hazard but he's not like that cartoonist evil he's just a redneck who's a little bit of an asshole they needed to play him up more like agreed yeah and give him like some really more bad traits like you saw like a little bit bad traits but like give him more because in the sequel they did this much better they put the kids against racists and bigotry always a good which villain. is a was a good villain yeah. now Porky, he is a villain. Like, he's a bad guy. He owns a... Well, if you don't own a, a shitty bar, that's not bad. But, you know, he treats well, kids like... Sh- yeah, he treats yeah. kids like shit. You know, he just basically messes with them and beats them up. But, you know, that's somewhat their fault. I mean, the, okay, so the... It's all their fault. Yeah, it's all their fault. They, they are the ones that are, are harassing him. It's yeah. his business. He, he doesn't do anything wrong. I mean, he's an unsavory character. Yeah. But... I mean, it was cool what he did to him. They, he, he put him in a room, and then he leased a trap door and threw him in a creek, which yeah. sucks. Yeah, that does suck, and I would want to get revenge for that. But, yeah, you know, but in a fun way. They don't do it in a fun way. The guy, the racist guy, who, let's call him racist guy, because I don't know his name. I don't remember his name. I don't know his name, but, yeah, the racist guy was just, like, he kept on going back, trying to get revenge, and he kept on getting the shit kicked out of him. And the characters were like, we got to stop him. He keeps on doing this. And it's never going to end. But they don't stop him. He just keeps on going. And he keeps on getting the shit kicked out of him. For some context here, it's actually very surprising how little Porky and Porky's are in this movie. Wouldn't you say? I was very surprised by how little of Porky's was in Porky's. Yeah, I thought this movie was going to be like them trying to get into Porky's. So that, that's the whole movie. Like, that's like the Holy Land. Like, they're going to go into Porky's. It's going to be this crazy room with, like, all these crazy things. Like, no, it's just a regular bar with some strip shows. And then that's it. <laughs> that's really it. Uh, 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 outside, decorated with a flashing neon light of a Porky Pig-looking character, you know, scoring. But uh, 
Other than that, yeah, it was nothing special. Yeah, I thought it was going to be like a magical wonderland of booze and alcohol and stuff like that. Like in the 80s. Like in the 80s, they took everything to the top, to the 10. This is, did not do that at all. Like it just, no. no. No, and like they go in there underage. They get ridiculed, which maybe was a little too far, but it's a learning lesson. They get ridiculed and told to leave the county. The brother, Porky's brother, is the sheriff, Alex Karras, and he takes them out of the county. And all of a sudden, he's the bad guy, and they destroy his business. Yeah, <laughs> they destroy his business, not just uh, give him a bad reputation. They literally tear down his business. Yeah, so it's, it's incredible. And the county does it like the, their home county does it like in a coordinated effort where they get law enforcement on their side and everything. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, if they this would have showed him as more of a bad guy, then that that, that would have made him like they would have made the kids more sympathetic, and also made Porky seem more evil. And that, I know I was sympathizing for Porky at the end of it. Yeah, honestly, that's true. Um, but yeah, he's not in it a whole lot, and frankly, the real bad guy of this movie is racism. Yeah, there's a lot of really out of the blue instances of bigotry toward jewish people mainly yeah some black people and then right they uh one of their schoolmates one of the kids in the group is a uh, is jewish and uh there's one kid in the group that's blatantly racist against african americans and another one in the group whose dad was in prison for being a racist or was it a hate crime i have no idea no uh but he's uh, anti-semitic it's a real mess yeah, and that's the progressive thing about this film. Like the kids don't like bag on the characters about. Like, no, they don't. They they downplay the. They don't downplay the racism. They say like, don't do that. Like, don't be racist. And that's like, that's really surprising for nineteen eighties comedies because usually they don't like encourage racism in these movies. But it's just it's just there and they just laugh at it. They don't just like they just ignore it. But in this one, they don't. <laughs> True. How would you describe this movie? Like it's. I'd like to say it was like a series of jokes. Like Caddyshack to me is not, it's not like a good, well-made, cohesive movie, but it's a series of jokes and events that are funny and carried by a terrific cast. Mm -hmm. This to me is just a series of attempted humor. Yeah. I don't even know what to call this. This is like schoolyard humor, and that's funny in the schoolyard, but in, in film, it's not really that funny. Like I say, like if this actually happened, like if I saw this happen when I was in school, I'd probably laugh. Like the scene where the giant condom came in, yeah, it seems like fun. You like you mess around with the giant condom, yeah, it's fun. In the in the film version, it's not really that funny. It's no, it, there's there's it's really kind of I don't know. I I laughed maybe t- a hand, two three times. Yeah, I will say one funny line was when the gym teacher Miss Bellbricker. It's a recurring joke where she's this, um, you know, uh, hard nosed uh, PE teacher and. Uh, She's the one that catches the boys staring at the girls uh, while they're showering. One of the boys puts his dick through the hole that they're looking through, and Miss Bellbricker famously grabs it and and tries to tear it off, I guess. Like, ew. But then later she goes to the principal after the incident, and she says, I can identify the boy. I know who it was. He had a mole on his penis. And, and she's talking to the principal, and in the background the two male PE coaches are just laughing up a storm and it's a scene that and i don't think they should i don't think they should have laughed at all i think they should have kept a straight face and then then panic and then, pan and then when she then when she leaves then they break into the hoodie that probably would have been better yeah well, what's so striking about that scene is how long it goes on yeah there's a lot of scenes in this movie like that they go on for long stretches of time with no music yeah no music, no music in yeah movie. it's very bizarre but the line that i will admit i laughed at in that scene was when the male coaches are laughing at her and they're, you know, wheezing and in between breaths, one of them says, yeah, we could, uh, we could get a, a sketch artist to come in and draw it up and ask all the students, have you seen this prick? <laughs> and I, well, I, I did laugh a little bit there, but otherwise, this movie just misses so many marks. This movie's really sad. Kinda. This is a sad movie. Kinda, yeah. You get a kid whose father's an asshole who beats him up and wants him to be racist, and then the kid doesn't want to be racist, but is present to his father. And then it's all about like being a better person. Why is this teaching me values? This is Porky's. Like this shouldn't. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, in a, in a way, uh, it does have some uh, good lessons in it. Uh, in the end, they all become friends. And you are even telling me uh, that the, the racist kid in the first one is no longer uh, racist in the second one. I guess so. Yeah. Okay. So I guess we, I, I'll go into the second one a little bit. So beginning of the second one starts off with 
kind of beginning of the first one. It basically just recaps the whole movie of the first, the, the whole, whole, it recaps the whole first movie. That's yeah. the, that's the beginning of it. And then you get Pee Wee measuring his dick. Not dick measuring in these movies. Really? Yes. I have never done that. Have you ever measured your dick? No. No? Oh, maybe actually when I was younger. Full disclosure, maybe. But. I don't know how to read a ruler, so I, I either think my penis was way too small, or I think my penis was way too big. <laughs> Um, yeah, so, okay, so then that happens, and basically the whole plot of this movie is the kids are doing Shakespeare, and, um, town racist and, uh, a religious fanatic, a preacher, wants to stop them from doing Shakespeare, and, uh, racists want to stop it because a, a Native American is playing the lead as Romeo, and a white girl is playing Juliet, and that's a better protagonist than Porky, because Porky, that actually shows hatred, shows bigotry, that shows badness, that's why these people should be messed with. Yeah. Yeah, and they did it great. They uh, sabotage them by stripping the clansmen naked and shaving all the hair off their body and putting them through a rally of uh, when the preacher was having a rally, they pushed them through. That's much better. And they, then they played an audio of the preacher and a bunch of councilmen watching Dirty Flicks. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That's uh, much better. Actually. Yeah, it's way more fun. And there's music. That's, a, that's, a sh- that's great. Yeah. So they improved. They improved. Yeah, they oh. learned their lesson. <laughs> well, glad to hear. I mean... Did they make for a funny movie? Probably not. I didn't really laugh that much doing it. It's just... But at least it shows some improvement. Yeah. That's not bad. Yeah, because that was the most striking thing to me about this one was like just how little the actual comedy was in it and just how poorly it was shot. I mentioned that that scene in the principal's office that goes on way too long, but then there's also the scene with Lassie is her nickname, and that's Kim Cattrall's character. Oh, yeah. That was the movie. Like, I think that scene with her. I think I laughed at that one. I think that was the only time I laughed. I laughed a little, too, because it was just so absurd. It just keeps going on and on. Yeah. Like, basically, everyone, the, the one PE coach is, like, infatuated with her and, you know, trying to get with her, and when he finally does during school hours... He uh, asks her, they're like in a, screwing in a room like right above the, the gym or something. And she, you know, he goes, so why do they call you Lassie? And then they're having sex and she starts like howling like a dog and everyone in the gym class hears it. And now I don't, okay, so. It just the, goes on so long. Yeah, one of the PE teachers was like, get her to that room and then you'll find out. Does yeah, he only do it in that room? Does he only make those noises in that room? Or like, if, if you have sex like, in like a in a hotel room, would she also make those noises? No, then she would. Uh, then she'd make like uh, uh, banshee noises or something. Yeah. Who knows? It was. Uh, I guess it was probably a funny joke back in the eighties. Yeah, I don't know this. This movie, like even in the eighties, like this movie was bad. This movie was critically critically smashed. Like. Nobody liked it that much. Let's see. Uh, Rotten Tomato scores was okay. So it is critic score is where is it? Okay, here it is. Thirty four percent. Audience score fifty seven percent. No, not even the audience really likes this movie that much. Oh jeez. So yeah, so it's not that great. Um, Roger Ebert gave it one and a half stars, which is more than Clifford, which I like Clifford more than this movie. So that's a surprise. Because it was, like, okay, so Animal House came out in 78, this came out in 81. Mm -hmm. So, Animal House set the blueprint, and then they did the blueprint again, but didn't do it correctly. Let's talk about the actors and the characters in this film. They're not memorable at all, mostly. I mean, Pee-wee's somewhat memorable, memorable, but... They're all two-dimensional. They're all two-dimensional. They're just regular high school kids, which doesn't work unless you make them interesting. Teenagers, like I said, teenagers aren't interesting. You have to make them interesting. Like, um... And Days and Confused. Uh, you had a QB who didn't want to play by the rules of the coach, so he was kind of hippie and anti authoritative You had uh, pot smokers who were thinkers. You had kids who didn't like to party that much, but were free thinking. But you also had kids who liked to drink and smoke. But, you know, they had some kind of character, charm to them. So that's how you're right. memorable and stuff like that. It's a good word to use, charm, there, because there's, there's no charm in this Yeah. Movie. They're basically just, like, they're, they're actually, just horny kids. Yeah. That's, that's it. it. Even the women. That's it. Um, Let's see if I can... Let me pull up the review real quick of Roger Ebert. Because he, like, stats this. Okay, so... I don't know if I should read this word for word or not, but... Um, Porky's is another raunchy teenage sex and food fight film. Do we have a food, food fight? fight? I don't have a food fight in this movie. No. The whole drama seems fixated on the late 50s and early 60s. That's also true, because Caddy... Because, actually, no, Caddy Sack was... Like then, it was contemporary, yeah. it was contemporary, but also Animal House was in the 60s and mm-hmm. probably other films. 
Um, do teenagers really identify with jokes about locker room, Trojans, boobs, jock straps, killer, dyke, gym, coaches, and barfing? Yeah, probably. I'm trying to think of this. If I was 14 years old, would I laugh at this movie? I think I would have been bored out of my mind. Maybe. Because your dad saw it, right? Did he see it yeah. in 1982 or did he see it later? Did you uh, ask him that question? Good question, actually. He probably saw it when he was in high school. Yeah. He graduated right around then. Yeah, and he said it was terrible. Yeah, he said he didn't like it. Yeah. So that's, an, yeah. So I don't think I would like this movie. I mean. I don't think I would have either. I yeah. Mean, nothing works. None of these characters are interesting. You have Alex Karras, who, again, was great in Blazing Saddles, and all he did was speak in, like, you know, one monosyllabic words, and and he was, you know, far funnier there. Longo than he was just, here. Ga- just pawn in Man's Game. <laughs> that is a great line. Yeah. But he doesn't have anything to do here other than uh, be a, an imposing sheriff, and that's, yeah. that's it. Uh, mm-hmm. Porky is, I guess, a sleazy businessman. and He may be, but once again, you didn't show it at all, so we're right. not going to side with the teenagers at all. I can't. And some of them are racist, and they do learn the lesson, I, I guess. guess. Maybe if I was a teen, I might have been on the teen side there, but it's like, no, you got caught trying to drink underage. You uh, asked Porky to pimp out his strippers, and then he made a joke of you. Yeah. That's a learning lesson. Sorry. That's mm-hmm. how I was taught as a kid. True. You get caught, mm-hmm. you learn your lesson, you move on. And they didn't do that. No. And they deflected. They said, no, I'm right. Yeah. He's wrong. Mm-hmm. Let's destroy his establishment <laughs> and his car. Yeah. I don't know, should we really talk about this movie anymore? I mean, there's nothing, no, we're just basically repeating ourselves over and over again. They're not really fleshed out characters. There's no really story to this movie. Even not a great plot. Even notes are like that, too. Even yeah. notes are like Jarvis. Jarvis is the name of the racist shithead. Okay, I wrote Jarvis, racist shithead. Pee-wee, total creep. Me, total creep. This movie really captures the racism of the 50s. I mean, it's just a series of odd scenes. There's no real de- yeah. defined tone of the it's movie. It's supposed to be like more deep than it should be. Yeah. I also know. wrote in all caps, when the fuck are they going back to Porky's? <laughs> I figured that would be the climax. Yeah, this whole it. movie should have been around Porky's. That's it. They should have been around like trying to get into Porky's. Like sexy teenagers just trying to sneak into Porky's but failing. And they keep on failing in elaborate ways. That would have been great. If and then the final f- and the final scene, they get in and then something like huge happens. Like the... Like, say the building does fall apart, but not because they cause it, because, uh, I don't know, like a mini riot happens, or like a, something like oh, that. Oh, gosh, like an, or an act of God, like something that stops them from finally scoring. That would have been funny. Yeah. That actually probably would have been pretty yeah. funny. Yeah, instead we did not get that. So, we got Porky's instead. That's that's yeah. it. Okay. It's... So, let's get into our final thoughts right now, then, because I'm tired of talking about this movie. We're just going to repeat do. the same thing over and over again for 15 minutes. So, would I recommend this movie? No. It's not really that fun. It's more deep than you think, which is kind of good for the 80s, but that's not what I'm expecting of Porky's. I'm expecting like a laugh a minute riot, and I didn't get that at all. So I would give it like a half star. I would not recommend it, and I just should be kept in the past like a lot of other movies. This really is kind of like a time capsule movie, and I do wonder why it still kind of resonates, or why it is considered... Uh, is it even considered a classic? Or wh- I guess why so. Why that air about it that maybe it was a classic? The crazy thing about this, this grossed over $100 million in the box office when that's it opened. Insane. That's insane. And was crazy. it just because you see some boobs and some guy's dick? Probably. There was no internet. Yeah, it was 1981. I mean, like, films like that, only films like that you could see was, like, x-rated movies and like porno theaters and stuff like that yeah. this was a, a high but i don't know high budget but this was a budgeted film made by hollywood production yeah, or canadian so, production yeah. country sorry canadian oh, right, production was, company yeah. and it was released nationally in theaters and people went to see it i mean yeah i again i don't think it's a good movie i don't think it's aged well i don't recommend it am i glad i saw it yes just so i can say that i've seen it yeah Oh, by the way, I'm still going to watch Porky's 3. I'm just gonna, I'm just going to do it, yeah. You have to. Yeah. Oh, I also forgot to tell you, Porky's is not in Porky's 2 at all. So, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. I guess so, yeah. He was barely in the first one. True. <laughs> um, well, okay. Uh, that's great. Uh, there's apparently, like, no real trivia about this movie. No, uh, I actually tried to look it up. <laughs> Mostly all of it's just, like, uh, this person worked with this person, that person worked with that person. This film was banned, and that's mostly it. 
Um, this was the highest grossing film in Canada for 24 years. Wow. Yeah, uh, before 2010. Uh, it's now behind a movie called Bond Cop, Bad Cop, which I believe means sure good cop, mean. bad cop. I don't know what that means. And Resident Evil Afterlife. Uh, Pee-wee's real name is Edward Morris. Interesting. And the ten dollars they paid the black guy to scare the teenagers away is ten bucks. And in 2019, that would be ninety-five dollars. Today, now it would be a hundred and two dollars. Oh my God! Yes. Wow. And, and these were the fun facts, folks. This is. <laughs> it's not, I mean, they're not particularly fun. No. They, I will say really quickly that scene had potential. There was a, some comedy, you know some actual understanding of comedy behind it but yeah again, it drags everything out too long yeah There's and they did it better in two they did it better in the sequel in the sequel they have a scene where i guess peewee has this plan to get the guys back and so he just he decides to hire this uh circus girl to help trick him but then the guys find out about it and then we the tables on him so the girl die like pretends to die when they're having sex and so they hide, and so they convince Porky, like we gotta hide the body. The hide, they, sorry, they convince Pee Wee, we gotta hide the body. And so when when the guy, when then a zombie, a fake zombie pops up, because that was Pee Wee's plan. It was just like, oh, now you're on your own, Pee Wee. And so they left Pee Wee alone in the graveyard, running again. Incredible. Yeah, and that was done better. I'll take your word for it. Definitely. So yeah, um, I guess I'll go to my red buttons MVP. Sure. Um, no, that's I'm gonna break the boundaries here. Okay, I usually give the people. Okay, and there are more things in movies than just people, TJ. Mm, you're right. I'm going to give this Red Buttons MVP to the diner they go to called Deadbeats. Why? Yeah. Because it's a great name, and that's the probably only memorable thing in this movie I remember. <laughs> I get, yeah, I, I'll applaud you for that. So Deadbeats is our Red Buttons MVP of Porky's. Congratulations, Deadbeats. May you actually be a restaurant yeah, in your name. <laughs> I'd go to a place called Deadbeats. Definitely. Yeah. Okay, um, now we're done talking about that movie. We have now completed our first six movies. Yes. It's now over. Now, we did plan to rank these movies, and now we are. Yeah. Now, that's, that's the audience remember. The movies are, in no order, uh, Clifford, yep. Yep. Porky's, Dirty Watson Scandals, Kramer vs. Kramer, Midnight Cowboy, and Ishtar. Correct. Yes. Okay, so let's go through our rankings now. Perfect. So, for number six, I had Porky's. How about you? Number six had Ishtar. Ishtar? Okay. I think Porky's was a little bit better than Ishtar. Ishtar had, like, no joy at all. Like, I just felt like it was sucking my soul out from my body. That's fair. Porky's, I felt confused. There was, like, a little bit of humor. But at least it didn't suck the soul out of my body like Ishtar did. Let me tell you why I put Ishtar at five, then. Okay. Over Porky's. Got it. I put, I put Porky's at five. Yeah, so we just flipped up. Yeah, we flipped up. So I, the only reason I ranked Ishtar ahead is because it has Charles Grodin. And I love Charles Grodin. That's true. And it was actually a somewhat competently made movie. Porky's just, there was, again, it was just... I would show. argue Porky's was a more complicated movie because Porky's didn't have the backlash of what happened behind the scenes. It's with true. Elaine May, uh, well, all I Roy mean Mady. It's and, produced. It yeah. looks better produced. That's it, true. It, it's got music. It's got... Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's better paced, I suppose. But again, it's... It's not uh, exactly raising the bar too much higher. So you had Porky's at five. Mm-hmm. How about four? You go. I had Clifford. Same. Yeah. Same here. Clifford was a very enjoyable movie. It was. Yeah. Um, it had it was way funnier than Porky's and his toy. It may have been more ridiculous, but it was just Martin Short and Charles Gordon helped this like made that movie. Yeah. And definitely more memorable than either Ishtar or Porky's. And I would definitely watch Clifford again than whether Porky's or Ishtar. Me too. I think uh, when Martin Short's one of those actors that you can enjoy in a movie on its own, you know, on his own merits, just being a part of it. But then having Charles Grodin to play that straight man character, that's a good combination. Yeah. The movie's not great, but it, it, it was a fun combination. If I was if I was Roger Ebert, I would give Porky's the half star and then Clifford the one and a half star. If I'm Ro- if I was Roger Ebert right now, I'd be like, "Oh my god, I'm dead." <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so number three, what'd you have? Uh, I had Midnight Cowboy. Oh, okay. 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 So, okay. Um, a reason I have Midnight Cowboy. Midnight Cowboy is a great film. Mm-hmm. But would I watch it again? I don't think so. Like, I, it's a great film to see once, and you see why it's a great film. I didn't really connect with it that much. I think it's just it's like Citizen Kane. You watch Citizen Kane once, and you just need to watch, appreciate and you appreciate it. it, and you don't have to watch it again. Sure. And would I watch Midnight Cowboys again? Not really, no. But would I say it's a great movie, and you should go check it out? Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right, that's fair. I had Dirty Rotten Scoundrels at three. Not an indictment on that movie at all. It's just, uh, 
Uh, you, had, you know, someone had to be number three. Uh, that was obviously a very funny... I had a lot of fun watching that movie. I loved the cast. I loved the premise. Um, and I was very pleasantly surprised with it. Um, but I couldn't, I couldn't bring it to bring myself to rank it above the the other, the last two. Yeah, I understand why. And I, it kind of does a more on reach, rewatchability and enjoyability. You know, I think part of it too is I'd never fully appreciated Dustin Hoffman. Yeah. I, you know, uh, I'd seen him in a, you know, Meet the Fockers. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Dick Tracy as a small, small role or something. I'd always heard like of his. Uh, you know, he his his legend. He's a legendary, you know, very famous actor. And yeah, um, he had a great uncredited Simpsons guest role, which is considered one of the greatest episodes of the series. Um, but I'd never seen like his movies that made him into that person. Mm-hmm. And so at number two, I have Kramer versus Kramer. Yeah, I have Judging Watson Scoundrels okay. at number two. This movie was funny, memorable. Steve Martin gave an amazing performance. So did Michael Caine. Um, I would rewatch this movie again with people, and that's why I put it at number two. Yeah, see, I guess I didn't factor in the rewatchability. You're right, because yeah. it is definitely... I would not watch Kramer vs. Kramer. Yeah, like, would I watch oh, Clockwork okay. Orange again? No. Probably not, no. I mean, I haven't watched it since, like, the seventh grade, so... It's kind of like you need to watch it once, and that's it. And, yeah. yeah. I got you. That, that's definitely a type of movie that exists. Mm-hmm. I guess you're right. I do like the, like your your reasoning there for Dirty Rotten Scoundrels at 2. Uh, Kramer vs. Kramer, for me, I just... Again, I thought it was just an acting tour de force. Yeah, that's my number one also. Stuff. Yes. Yeah. Nice. Uh, for me, I, I did have Midnight Cowboy at number one, but I think that's also just partially because I had, like you said, you didn't relate to this movie. I did a tremendous deal because of my years spent in New York as a gigolo. Uh, <laughs> I related very heavily yes. to this movie. Did you also uh, dress as a great... cowboy or a uh, Midwestern? Uh, no, I, I dressed as an astronaut. And uh, <laughs> I had a best friend who was a street urchin, and uh, he died on my way to Michigan. Oh, uh, sad. It was very sad. Um, but. I just put. I don't know why I picked Midnight Cowboy number one. I think I'll always remember this movie, even if I don't rewatch it. Which again, I probably won't. Yeah. It just blindsided me when we were watching it. I was almost like, I don't know if I like this. But then I kept thinking about it and thinking about it. And we had that. And you cut so much out of the episode. But how much did we actually record? Fifty minutes. Uh, yeah. uh, f- I think forty minutes. I don't. Know. Yeah. I think a long episode was our last one about um what was that that was that was that was, that that was Midnight Cowboy. Yeah, yeah so fifteen minutes so it's a fifteen minutes episode I've yeah. cut it maybe down to forty five I don't know I didn't check maybe it, it is fifteen minutes long but yeah but it was it was great it was historically very interesting everything but like would I go back and watch it again maybe I don't know if I ever watched like maybe we should watch Midnight Cowboy but is it like a rewatchable movie like I watch like I listen to a podcast called Rewatchable. And I don't think Midnight Cowboy would be on it because it is a very sad movie. Very, yeah. it connects with you really emotionally. But I just didn't feel that connection. Like I just like the same way I felt Kramer vs. Kramer. Kramer vs. Kramer was hooked. I was just like I was watching that movie. I can feel it deep inside me. Like I relate. Like the, the acting in it was superb. Dustin Hoffman and and um, Meryl Streep gave an amazing performance. Even if Dustin Hoffman was a, is a scumbag who did those awful things to her behind the scenes. But you just it is. It felt so emo- like more emotional than Midnight Cowboy, and he connected those characters more because they're dealing with the subject that I could relate to, even though I've never been through divorce. But like, I'm not a gigolo going to New York City in 1969 or something like that. Like, I, I don't relate to that. I relate to family troubles and family issues, which I relate a lot more to Kramer versus Kramer. That's a good point. Yeah, that's a good point. And what also is impressive about that one too is. You have these two legendary actors. You don't even see them as the actors. You no. see them as the characters. Definitely. And that, to me, is impressive when you can pull that off. Yeah. Even though I do think... I do remember, like, the character... Like, well, that's because I'm bad at remembering characters' names. But I do remember Joe Buck and uh, Ratchet Rizzo's characters yeah. more named more Absolutely. than Dustin Hoffman's and Meryl Streep's characters in Kramer vs. Kramer. Sure. Well, better acting-wise, I think Kramer vs. Kramer is better than... For Dustin Hoffman's sake. Dustin Hoffman did a better job in Kramer vs. Kramer than... In Midnight Cowboy, I think. I think they didn't get it. Even though they both were good, I think Kramer vs. Kramer was his top. That's fair. Yeah. That's fair. And honestly, like I said, I didn't even factor in the rewatchability of these. Um, I guess I was just ranking mine on the... How they... Uh, I don't know. How do you put it? Based on first impressions and like what I expected going in and what I got out of it. For instance, I expected Porky's to be somewhat mildly amusing... And it was just painful. Yeah. It was a sl- slog to get through. Midnight Cowboy, I, I had, and Kramer vs. Kramer, I was hooked at both of those. Dirty Rotten Scoundrels is definitely the most rewatchable, along with Clifford. Definitely. I find comedies in general are a lot funnier. Yeah. 
um, or more rewatchable in, in many instances. But yeah, I'd say these were a, these were this was a good six movies to start us off with. Definitely. And the next six movies, hopefully, uh, also like that. But hopefully, the next six movies are also something we really like, really hate, or we're whatever doing it themes be. This time. More, more, succinct more themes. themes. It could be uh, actors, it could be directors, it could be this general, like weird themes in general, like movies with licorice in them. It could be Porky sequels. Yeah. There's only... You've seen the second one. No, yeah. No. Yeah. So we're going to do two. Well, apparently, uh, Howard Stern made one, didn't he? No, he tried to make one. Oh, okay. A lot of people try to remake Porky's. I don't know why. <laughs> They kept on trying to do it. It never worked. Apparently, they have fond memories of it. Yeah. I mean, it probably was a fun time. You're in Florida. You're with a, You're probably in your 20s. You're just drinking all the time. And Can you think of a movie of our gen- for our generation that would be like our Porky's where it's objectively a bad movie, but people love it? <sighs> I don't know. Do people hate Step Brothers? No, like, I think people love Step Brothers. Yeah. I'm trying to think like Will Fem- Um, It's probably a good, a good avenue to go down. We'll have that answer for I don't know, like we'll Project X, X, maybe? I don't know anyone who watched it. Yeah, I don't think anybody watched it. Well, I don't know. It's it's for the 80s. 80s were the sex comedy mecca, so that's true. that's true. So those are our final thoughts on Porky's, and those are the final thoughts of those six films we watched. So next episode, we'll give you a new six films that we're going to watch. We'll give you a little supplemental episode. Yeah, those supplemental episode to tell you which films we're going to watch next and discuss. So that's it for... It's still new to us, damn it. I'm Mo, and my anti-anxiety medication did keep up. I'm glad to hear it, and my pre-workout is long gone, and I just want to binge eat now. (laughs) That's great. Okay, let's have our friend Robert Mitchum play us out. See ya.